Welcome back to Learn SKN and today we have another video for you, another in our lecture series. Today we have taxation. That would be section 9, role of the government in an economy of the principles of business syllabus. We would have covered section 1 already. We would have covered section 2 already to a certain degree. And now we are going to do section 3, which is state the purposes of taxation. And also section 4, distinguish between direct and indirect taxes okay so that's how we're going to jump in today in the sil from the syllabus so without further ado let's just jump right in so we're looking at taxation that's chapter that's unit nine in the textbook so we have a little introduction here and so they are talking about the purpose of taxation and what taxes are there to to achieve as the job of taxes so let's do a little reading here government need money to finance the activities for many governments a large share of total spending is accounted for by public spending on government authorities administrative departments and state-owned enterprises the majority of the pub of public expenditure is financed from tax revenues taxes are compulsory payment backed by law and are collected either directly from the income or wealth of individuals and businesses or indirectly from the money they spend on different goods and services tax evasion or non-payment of taxes by an individual or business is punishable is a punishable offense so at this uh, right here we can pull out the definition of a tax and so the definition of a tax is a taxes are a compulsory payment backed by law and are collected either directly or in indirectly all right so the key thing here is to know that taxes are compulsory so you know there's this saying that goes you know all you have to do is you know stay black and pay taxes or uh, whatever this saying goes all right so taxes is basically compulsory it's a compulsory payment to the government and of course if you try to dodge your taxes then you'll be considered you know tax a tax evader you're evading your taxes all right so that's basically what a tax is so, what is the job of a tax? Why are taxes there besides earning revenue for the government? What else are taxes used for? And so we have some, some reasons here, some objectives of taxes right here. So we have to curb inflation by reducing the rate at which total demand for spending is rising in the demand or spending is rising in the economy. So what is inflation then? Inflation is a general rise in the price levels within an economy within a country that's where general price levels are rising so everything going up in cost all the prices going up your gas price going up your food prices going up your hospital fees going up your school fees going up so inflation is when there's a general rise in the price level within an economy and so you know that's not exactly the best thing to have in an economy a lot of the economies out there are trying to fight inflation a lot of the monetary policies and the Fiscal policies used by government are there to fight inflation. And so, taxes are a part of the toolkit for the government's fiscal policy. The fiscal policy is taxes and spending and budgeting and borrowing and those kind of things on, behalf, on the government side. So, how can a tax curb inflation? Well, a tax means that things would be more expensive. And if things are more expensive, then the law of supply and demand would state that as prices go up, your demand for certain things come down. So in applying a tax to certain things, then the spending rate in the economy should fall because now you're disposed, your, whatever the good was is now more expensive. And as I say for normal goods, if the price goes up, you tend to spend less on that good. And that's part of the law of demand. When the prices go up, demand tend to fall down. So if the government wants to pull back the economy, if the economy is overheating, inflation is skyrocketing, then they can apply taxes on whichever level they want to, and then that would kind of pull back some of the spending or total demand within an economy. So that's the curb inflation part. So that would kind of you know simmer down the prices, you know, so they don't rise or raise too fast or too high. So that's one objective of taxation. Another one, to remove competition from local goods. In order to protect infant or fledgling industries by taxing imports at high rates. So now this would be something like a tariff. So the government can apply a tariff. A tariff is a tax that is applied to goods that are being imported. So if you're importing something, for example, you buy something from Amazon, 
when it comes into your country you have to pay you know your import duties and stuff like that so you have to pay tariffs and stuff like that when you're importing goods uh, when companies import their when people import their cars from overseas government can put on a heavy tariff to encourage them to buy cars from local dealers so one of the job of the tariff is to encourage persons within the economy to buy local buy locally made products instead of bringing in you know produce from overseas you buy local produce so the government will put on a tax or a tariff on the importation of stuff so you can focus on local goods and if you're following the news you see it played out in america where donald trump decided to put tariffs on goods coming in from china and as such when the, those from china land in america they are going to be more expensive and as such you would encourage americans to just buy locally produced items locally produced goods so it is it's, it's in a way to help to make the local industries more competitive against foreign co uh, competition then this is here to lower unemployment by encouraging people to buy local produce so encouraging linkages among sectors so these things tied they're saying you can pass a tax like a tariff so that people would produce local goods and if you're producing if you sorry if people can buy local goods and if you're buying local goods then that would be incentive for the local producers to make more of those goods but in order to make more of those goods they will have to employ more persons and so you see that the economy is a cycle it's a cycle where one thing affects the other so if demand for local goods go up then local demand for more employment to produce more goods would go up all right so let's say that you know you are uh, let's say you're a farmer you're producing you know your nice pork and the demand for local pork goes up you're going to want to produce more pork because the price gone up the price um, nice for you now you want to produce more pork so what are you going to do hire more farm hands to help you so that would that would lower unemployment and so this can apply to a variety of industries where if you spur local de demand local consumption then local production would go up and if local production goes up then local employment should increase and thus reducing unemployment and then we have to achieve greater equality in the distribution of wealth and income by taxing higher income earners to fund the provision of social services for majority of the citizens and so this way called income redistribution where the government can apply taxes like for example if you are working for a certain amount of money you're in a certain tax bracket then your tax might be higher than the average person and now the extra money is going to go towards producing things like social services welfare unemployment benefits various things that can then be trickled down to persons who cannot afford them so those who are on you know leave or disability or things like that they're going to be able to you know get disability monies and get unemployment benefits and stuff like that those who can afford to you know buy a meal also get the government um, provided school meal programs the government would uh, would would give uniforms to certain persons so that money that is taxed from the higher the richer persons is going to be redistributed to the poor in the form of social services then they say here to discourage the consumption and production of harmful products so taxes can be used to discourage the consumption of certain goods for example you can discourage the consumption of tobacco products alcoholic beverages and that's why you realize that you know you need, you need a liquor license to sell liquor that's a tax in a sense you have to pay for that and also to import to import liquor would be at a higher rate they're taxed at a higher rate so liquor and tobacco those products tend to have a higher tax and so therefore a higher price which can discourage persons from consuming those products a lot of co uh, countries are flirting with the idea of taxing sodas you know because the sugary nature of sodas are harmful to the general population and you know the government would have to spend more money in health care than you know so they prefer to prevent it than to have to spend so much money in health care so they want to put a tax on that to discourage dissuade people from purchasing certain harmful products certain harmful goods so that's those are the major objectives of taxation and so they went along to break them down here taxes is control inflation but of course we would have explained that already all right so for example they say inflation refers to a general and sustained rise in the average price level of goods and services in an economy as i said earlier 
prices change at different rates over time so inflation is always expressed as a rate of change per period of time per month per year the rate of price the rate of price inflation in an economy is usually measured by calculating the average percentage change in the average price of a basket of goods and services purchased by a typical family or household so this is what we're talking about the cpi now this is some more deep economics and so if you're not really the you know really economics major or anything like that then this stuff might be boring for you but the point here is that the tax is used to increase the cost of goods to try to curb demand for that good and so um reduce inflation and so we also went through the explanation for to protect infant industries where you charge a tariff for international goods so that those goods are more expensive and so it forces local people to buy the locally made products and give them a shot in the arm of actually being competitive a apart from from discouraging harmful product use the government can also use taxes to discourage harmful practices for example you hear what a carbon tax now government would use a carbon tax to try and prevent companies from simply dumping you know co2 into the atmosphere or when they're producing in a factory you just don't care you know you just pump all the put the bad stuff into the atmosphere you know you do a little pollution contaminating the air the soil and stuff like that so the government has what we call green taxes that would change behavior and activities that are harmful to the environment so that's another way in which taxes can be used to discourage not only the use of bad products but also bad practices especially in business where they encourage persons to you know you know be clean use green energy so when they don't they would charge them a tax and have them have the cost of doing business higher because the flip side is if you use green energy for example you decide to install solar panels and stuff like that then the government would use tax to you know give a tax exemption but the other side now if you decide not to go the healthy clean way of course they're gonna charge you a green tax or you know carbon tax to encourage you to you know be a better corporate citizen so that's what taxes are used for all right so that's the main gist of the purpose or the objectives of taxes now the types of taxes out there there are two main type of taxes taxes can be classified as direct or indirect depending on how they are collected and who pays them see that so pull from that that there are two types of taxes direct and indirect and they are so because it depends on how they are collected and who pays them so direct taxes direct taxes are collected directly from the income or wealth of individuals and businesses you hear that so direct as in directly pulled from your income so your income tax your corporate tax those are direct taxes they are pulled directly from your source of income your source of money and so that's a direct tax so it's pulled directly from your wealth of individuals and businesses the burden of paying a tax or paying a direct tax falls on the person or business responsible for paying it Direct taxes include income taxes, corporation taxes on company profits, capital gain tax, and transfer taxes on property and other valuable assets. So those are the list of examples of direct taxes. So you have your income tax, you have your corporate tax or your corporation taxes on profits, then you have your capital gains tax, and also transfer taxes on property and other valuable assets. So those are examples of direct taxes. Direct taxes are normally charged as a percentage of income or wealth held. This may be a fixed percentage, so everyone pays the same proportionately. So that's a proportionately, it's a proportionate tax system, or rising percentage. So wealthy or those who are high incomes pay proportionately higher. No, that's why you call a progressive tax system, and we're gonna look at that later on. So you have your your regressive, progressive, and your proportional tax system. So those are direct taxes. And so they go more in depth as to the examples and of course you know income tax would be the tax that comes directly from your salary and so you know for some countries it might be a two percent or four percent or eight percent whatever the rate is they have a different rate and that amount of money is extracted from your pay slip your salary weekly monthly whatever and so they said income tax in countries income tax in many countries is a progressive tax system as i said before progressive meaning so a progressive tax system is one where the tax you pay rises as your income rises. 
so someone at a higher income pays a higher proportion of their taxes in of their income in taxes for example in the uk there is a basic rate of tax at 20 percent of income a higher rate at 40 percent of income and additional rate of 45 percent of your income so as your income rises you pay more in taxes and so that's what you call a progressive tax now this tax burden falls mainly on the richer persons so for a, a poor economy this is the kind of tax system you would want the progressive tax system because that the burden falls mainly on the richer folks the higher income folks as opposed to the lower income folks and so that's what we call a progressive tax system and so we have things like income taxes that are examples of the progressive tax systems or the pay as you earn all right in in this system there is a system called pay as you earn so let's read about this one personal income tax is usually collected in one of two ways either individuals earn money and submit a tax return at the end of the tax year with their income contributions that's like the american system or alternate alternatively income tax may be collected as a payroll tax in this payroll system there is a system called pay as you earn in the payroll department calc the payroll department calculates the employee's tax contribution and deducts it from the person's regular pay and so this is the more popular one that we in the caribbean would know the pay as you earn method in america you have the one where you have to you know april come and you have to do your taxes that's the system they have up there and of course you have other examples of your direct taxes your, your corporate tax that is tax levied on the profits of limited companies or corporations it may also be called a profit tax if applied to unincorporated businesses that's what you call the corporate tax then you have the capital gains tax a capital gains tax is a tax on profits from valuable assets that have increased in value for example shares antiques and jewelry in some countries if you make a profit from the sale of shares or other valuable assets you need to declare this in order to pay the appropriate amount of tax for example if you bought a painting for five thousand dollars and later sold for fifteen thousand you would be taxed on the gains you have made of ten thousand dollars all right and then you have your capital transfer taxes are placed when the owner when the ownership or title of assets such as shares or property is transferred from one person to another the transfer may occur as a result of sale gift or death that is inheritance the amount of the tax is based on the market value of the asset and so this is the one that a lot of people in america are fighting the rich people because they feel as though they should not be able to give their descendants whatever they whatever they inherited without it being taxed but you know the taxman collects taxman stay collecting all the time then we have what we call the indirect taxes so you have the direct taxes and now you have the indirect taxes now as the name suggests the indirect taxes are taken from you indirectly indirect taxes are goods and services indirect taxes are goods on our goods and services and the producers or the suppliers of the tax products are responsible for their payment therefore indirect taxes increase business costs so let's read that again indirect taxes are on goods and services and the producers or suppliers of the tax products are responsible for their payment therefore indirect taxes increase business costs and of course if it increases business costs you know that the companies are going to pin that cost on the consumers so they are going to transfer that increased cost to the consumers all right so let's go businesses will try to pass an indirect tax to the consumers by raising the price of their products indirect taxes are therefore sometimes called expenditure or outlay taxes they include things like you have your customs and excise duties stamp duties and sale or consumption taxes such as vat all right so all those are examples of indirect taxes an indirect tax may be a fixed percentage of a price or value or it may be fixed am a fixed amount the collection and payment of indirect taxes is normally the responsibility of the producers who then pass on as much of each tax as they can to the consumers and so we have some examples of indirect taxes here we have custom duties custom duties are also known as tariffs as we, we explained earlier and are taxes on imported goods entering a country 
tariffs may be used to raise the price of some imported products to protect domestic firms from overseas competition, as we discussed earlier. Then you have your excise duties. Excise duties are applied to specific goods such as alcohol, cigarettes, vehicles, gasoline, usually with the aim of reducing their consumption as well as raising revenue for the government. Excise duties are normally fixed charges on goods based on the amount sold, such as a dollar per liter of gasoline or two dollar per bottle of wine. So that's your excise duties. Then you have your purchase tax. A purchase tax is added to price of goods sold to consumers. This is similar to what you call VAT. All right, as I said, on your VAT, you only pay VAT if you pay, you purchase something. And then you have your stamp duties, commonly referred to as taxes imposed on the transfer of property. Historically, they are they were associated with any kind of legal documents because I realize a lot of government, in order to pay them for certain things, you have to buy stamps. For example, if you want a birth certificate, well, at least where I live, if you want a birth certificate, if you want your your police record, if you want your passport done, you have to buy stamps. And those stamps are the way of the government collecting that tax on that particular good. All right, good. Consumption taxes. There is a range of taxes known collectively as consumption taxes, where the consumer pays a higher retail price for certain goods or services. The retailer collects the relevant consumption tax includes in the higher retail price, which is then paid or remitted to the government. And so you have examples again, such as your value added tax or VAT, your general consumption tax or your GCT. And also you have your, what this one up here, your special consumption tax or SCT. That's so all those are taxes that you have out there, the indirect taxes, all right? And so you would realize that the new syllabus doesn't really have you go too in depth with taxation. You just cover the basics from the syllabus. So you have the describe, sorry, state the purpose of taxation as we did to curb inflation by using the supply of money in the economy to remove competition from local goods in order to protect infant or fledgling industries by taxing imports at high rates. And then you have also distinguish between direct and indirect taxes. And so you have them here. And so we don't really have to go more in depth with taxes beforehand with the old syllabus. You don't have to go and look at the tax systems, look at the different types. So as you can see here from the old um, syllabus, you would have had to look at the progressive versus the regressive versus the proportional tax, which I'm going to just give you a brief description. So the progressive and regressive tax, as I said before, progressive tax system, wealthy pay greater percentage of their income, regressive tax system, the burden falls on the low income households and the proportional tax, everyone pays the same percentage of income. And so all these types are represented by various graphs. And as you can see, the proportional tax system, you start low and you go high with your, as the income go up, so does your taxes. And then you have the progressive, sorry, the progressive, the proportional, is a proportional increase. Then you have the progressive where you see as it starts low and shoots up as your income goes up. And then you have the regressive where it starts high and as the income increase, you kind of pay less. As the income increase, it's regressing. So a poor would pay the higher percentage of that in that tax system. All right, so that's just a quick view of that tax system. So that's basically it for that section of the syllabus, section nine, where we looked at taxation. And so that's basically it. So you know what to do now, you know what to do. You are to like the video, click the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and hit the notification bell so you know when a next video would have dropped. And I'm thinking about doing some economics coming up and of course some agricultural science paper, uh, question, uh, lectures. So you know what to do, hit those buttons and stay tuned for more from Learn SKN. All right, that's it for now.